And so you can just take a guess what I'm probably gonna talk about today. Of course, I'm gonna be talking about Harry Potter and the Cursed Childs, parts one and two. This is the new script from JK Rowling, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne. This is based on a play by Jack Thorne, and yeah, pretty much they call it the eighth Harry Potter story. Do I agree with that or not? I'll talk about that a little bit more. Before I even get into that, before I even start this video, really, I just want you guys to know I love Harry Potter. I love it so very much. It is my childhood. It was my teenagehood. It was my, it's my adulthood now. It is just living inside of me. The whole point of this, if you loved Harry Potter and the Curse Shop, that's great. I'm so happy for you. And even if you didn't like it, that's also okay. Either way, we all have our own opinions. And that is what makes this world great. Everybody has different opinions. That's why we can have discussions. That's why we can have debates because every Everyone's got different opinions. So just know that I don't want there to be any bashing or any really rude or hateful comments in this video. At the end of the day, we're all Harry Potter lovers and that's all that matters. So just know that if you liked it, great. If you didn't like it, that's awesome too. I just wanted to throw that quick disclaimer out there before we even begin this video. So first of all, before I even talk about the play and the script and all that stuff, I really want to talk about my feelings when I figured out this book was made. So let's, you know, rewind back to nine years ago when Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows was over and how I felt. Overall, I felt complete. Of course I was sad that my favorite series ended. I was sad we had to leave my favorite characters. I had to leave my world that I love so much. But I felt a sense of completion. I felt I was happy with the way it ended. I felt it wrapped up perfectly. We got to see 19 years in the future how a lot of our favorite characters are doing and that everything is okay. And it just made me feel closure and completion. You know I felt you know when you end some series you're just like I really don't feel like it had a lot of closure. I don't feel like it was done. I felt with Harry Potter it ended beautifully. I was happy with it. Of course there's always a big chunk of me that really wanted new material constantly, but the majority of me was okay with how it ended. I was happy, you know, I was I was happy that it left on a good note and I just, that's all I really wanted. Of course, now we're on, fast forward to this year when we heard about The Cursed Child. My first feelings were nervousness and excitement all bundled up together. And because we were going to visit our friends again. I was going to see, I was going to visit the world that I love so, so much. See all of the characters that I loved and how they were doing. I was so excited for that. But a big majority of me was very nervous for a multitude of reasons. My main reason that I was so nervous is because I didn't want my happy ending to get ruined. I was so felt a completion with, my, with the epilogue and I felt everything was great. I was really, really scared that, you know, since we're getting new material, things go crazy, people might die, things might happen to our some couples. I was just so nervous about that epitome of a, of a great ending would be just catastrophically ruined. I was, that was my main concern. I think about Harry Potter, how it ended. I'm like, oh, I'm happy because I knew how it ended. Now I'm like, oh, things could change and I don't want them to change because I'm nervous because I don't want anything bad to happen. So I was a mixture of both feelings, you know, I was excited and nervous and it would just all bottle up on me. But at the end of the day, I was still so excited that we were getting new material and even the format, you know, is kind of another nervous thing because I'm, I don't read a lot of plays. I don't go to a lot of plays. I don't read a lot of scripts. So yeah, I was nervous about this, that whole this whole format of this book quite essentially and pretty nervous but overall excited that we got to visit the world once again. Overall after reading this I still don't know what to feel. I feel a mixture of many things. I'm just still very much on the fence about it and I think I will be that way for a very long time. No means that I hate this script, book, play, whatever you want to call it but by no means I didn't love it as much as I wanted to either. So I'm still just a very mixed bundles of emotions when it comes to this this new story. Like I said I was worried about it being a script because I felt it would take away from the story and it's a different format but I don't feel like it did take away from the story at all you know it's a different venture into a new format with Harry Potter but I felt like it could have been better as a book you know I think all of us probably think that but overall I'm not upset that it was a script because you know it's new Harry Potter material, so beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, I think I'll just think about this quite often and probably think of good memories from it because the sheer fact it is Harry Potter. The sheer fact alone will, I think, will just make me want to love it. You know, I think I'll have feelings. You know, like I said, I'm still just a mixed bundle of feelings. Oh, now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. We're gonna talk about some spoilers. So I say, if you haven't read this, maybe not watch any further. I don't want to spoil you by any means at all. I think it's best going into this book really not knowing too much. I knew like a little bit, but not the majority. I did not spoil myself. I didn't want to get spoiled. You have to really go into it with a fresh eye and literally no expectations, I think, is the best way to go into it. What I liked about the script and what I didn't like and just over my overall thought. Now we're heading in spoiler 
country, so maybe if you haven't read this book, do not watch any further. Letting you know that right now. First things first, I'm gonna talk about what I did like. And there's a lot of things I liked about the script, there's a lot of things I didn't. So I thought I'd start off on a happy note and tell you all the things that I really did like. So things I like, Scorpius Malfoy. Never did I think I would say that because I just have a bundle of emotions when it comes to the Malfoys. Trust me on this, Scorpius Malfoy is the gem of this book. If you are worried about reading this book because you're scared how you feel, read this book solely for the character of Scorpius Malfoy. He was just, he stole, he stole the show. I haven't seen the play, but he stole this script from me, hands down. He was funny, he was, you know, geeky, he was loyal, he was everything that we never got to see with being a Malfoy, you know, it's a whole different Malfoy whole new generation and Scorpius it was just the epitome of an amazing character. The gem of the script by far he just was the best thing about it. Another thing I really enjoyed was the seeing a different side of Slytherin. You know we've read seven books of Harry Potter so we've known about Slytherin but we've always seen a very bad side of Slytherin you know with Malfoy and Crabbe and Goyle and Pansy Parkinson and a lot of the majority of the Slytherin even Death Eaters you know whenever you think of Slytherin you just think there's some evil people up in there, they're bad people. But that may not be the case. We only got to meet a handful of Slytherins while Harry Potter was in school, and the handful that we knew were pretty not so great. So there could have been some amazing Slytherins that were in Slytherin. Just because you're in Slytherin does not mean you're a horrible or evil or villain, you know? It does not mean that at all. So now the Severus got sorted as Slytherin, I was okay with it. I was happy. I thought, you know, I think this house gets a lot of bad reps, so I'm, I'm happy to see that, you know, just because you're in Slytherin doesn't make you a bad person. It just, you know, every house in Hogwarts is amazing for their own accord. And I just really liked seeing a good side of Slytherin and I, I really enjoyed that honestly. Another thing I liked, which I mean everyone should probably expect this because it's me, is all the Ron and Hermione scenes. You guys know I am a huge Ron and Hermione fan. They are my favorite couple ever. I'm obsessed with them. So every chance they were in a scene together, I ate that junk up like candy. I loved it. They had some amazingly sweet scenes and <sighs> even love the fact that when the timeline or whatever you want to call it got messed up like twice and even though they were not together, they were still in love with each other, still pining for each other. I think it just goes to show you that no matter what like parallel universe or timeline they're in, that they're meant to be together. And I, oh. It's just Ron Hermione. This is my life, okay, guys. I even love the fact that when the time like I messed up for the first time, that Ron actually took Hermione to the Yule Ball as friends, and a spark didn't happen, and stuff like that. And he had Crom to take Hermione to the ball to realize his feelings, his feelings for her, and be like, I think, I think, I think I kind of love this girl. You know, a lot. There was a lot of Ron Hermione scenes for the sheer fact that J.K. Rowling kind of wanted to make up for the statement she made about them not supposed to be together, that she kind of regrets it. I guess that sort of makes up for what she said, but that was still, that was still such a huge blow to every Ron and Hermione shipper out there. Like it was like a knife in the heart. But I'm glad to see that they were okay. That was one of my top like three concerns about this new play. I was like if Ron and Hermione are divorced or something I am not gonna be happy. The thing I really enjoyed was seeing Harry as a father. You know Harry was not every father figure he had died. He has no clue how to be a parent. You know, most of us don't, myself included. But I loved watching him try to navigate his relationship with Albus, how he struggled with it, how he, you know, you could see the love he has for his children and Albus, you know, in particular because that's who the story follows. But I loved watching his, you know, growth of this father because we're so used to the gang as 17, you know, 11 to 17 year olds. This is, you know, he's pushing 40 and, you know, he's navigating something that he's never had to do in his life. Not finding evil, but the worst thing, you know, the hardest thing could be is being a father. I really love seeing Harry as a father. I also enjoyed watching his and Ginny's marriage. You know, in the books we knew that, you know, when the sixth book came along, Harry started developing feelings for Ginny, but we never really got to see too many Harry Ginny scenes one on one. So I really liked that there was a good emphasis on them in this book and seeing their marriage and seeing how strong of a mother Ginny is is probably a huge testament to, Wall to Molly Weasley, of course, but I really like them together. I think, you know, they have a very strong, very beautiful marriage, and I like seeing them more because I don't think we got enough of Harry Ginny in the books because you know seventh book was crazy. <laughs> Another thing I really enjoyed was Draco Malfoy. I have had a love hate a love and hate relationship with Draco Malfoy since day one. You know some books I'm like I think this guy could be okay. I could tell he's really you know struggling and has a lot of conflict and turmoil and he wants to be a better person. In some books I'm just like this dude's a dick. Like that's the bottom line. So Draco Malfoy really fluctuated throughout the whole series with me. Say what you will about Draco Malfoy in that series but 
he was a very interesting and conflicting person to read about. I love reading his story arcs in the whole series. In this script, I love Draco. He was the Draco I wanted to see. He's grown up. He is an amazing father. He really cares for his son in a way that his dad really never cared for him, you know? He really, I love reading about his late wife and how he loved her and that was just really beautiful. And Draco, you know, is also like Harry, navigating being a father. He has no clue how because he grew up very differently, you know? He had a lot of pressure on him just because of his family's name and, you know, a lot of, you know, evil stuff. And I think he really didn't want that for Scorpius. He really wanted to be a good father. And I love seeing that side of Draco. It was just amazing. And I also loved all the Draco and Harry scenes, you know. They're very, they kind of fight. I love the duel scene. That was hilarious. And I also like the end, you know, kind of where he banded with all the gang and you know he was like you know I think I kind of like being a part of this gang and I think a great friendship could emerge and that would just be amazing because I mean Draco you know it just goes to show you just because you may have not been that great in the series doesn't mean you can grow up and be an amazing person because you can. And the last thing I really liked about this story was the ending. I thought the ending was beautiful. It was very sad, bittersweet, but overall ending on a happy note. I thought it was beautiful. Also Snape in this book like that was a huge amazing thing. I did not expect to see him again but that was just amazing seeing a whole different side of Snape but yeah like I said there's a lot of things I liked about it but there's a lot of things I didn't like about which I'll get into right now and I'm sorry if I'm hurting and breaking your heart I apologize but these are just my opinions the first thing I really didn't like was the whole time travel element I like time travel when it's done really well otherwise it can get confusing and this one was definitely confusing you know I think because this was such a short you know it's not a huge book we don't have an 800 page book to really flesh out this whole time travel thing but we have a really like 300 page script when it's all dialogue so it went super fast. I did not enjoy the pacing of this book. I felt like it was just like like insanity and the time travel thing really added to that insanity. I just thought it was just all over the place. The whole plot of the story is the time travel, you know, going back to save Cedric, which was having huge consequences from that. And but I felt like the plot, the whole time travel thing was just uh and the time turners, oh my gosh, like we all read the time turners in the third book and everyone realized how much of how many plot holes were going to be because of the time turners and i think jk rowling even realized that herself which is why she destroyed all of them in the fifth book in the department of mysteries you're just like thank gosh because everyone's thinking just go back to a time, get a time turner and then get rid of Voldemort. easy peasy you know so i'm glad they got eliminated in the fifth book but now i'm like we have another time turner what the crap like why are we doing this why do we have this it's, it's like some parts of the time I like seeing you know the different ways the world could be that was interesting but a lot of me didn't really like the time travel thing because it was just really confusing. Another thing that I didn't like and this is probably going to be really upsetting a lot of people is Alpus. Alpus Potter. I, uh, I wanted to like him but he was just I get I get that he's a teenager and teenagers are just you know moody and you know, that's how they are. I get that. I was a teenager myself. I was there. But I felt like Albus was just kind of a jerk, you know? Here he was really trying to be a good dad and Albus was pushing away. Again, I get that he was a teenager, but Albus, you know, it took him a long time to be like, oh, you know, maybe I should try to be a different and better person. And I just <laughs> did not like Albus. I really didn't. Like, like Scorpius was be far better than Albus. Albus was just... Yeah. Another thing I didn't enjoy was the lack of characters. You know, when we first heard about going back to this world, we were so excited to get to see Ron Hermione kids, to see Harry and Jenny's kids, to get to see Teddy, Neville, Victoire, the Weasleys, Hagrid, McGonagall, everybody, and we didn't really even get a fraction of those characters. First of all, I get that the story revolves around the relationship between Albus and Harry. I understand that. But where were his other kids? Why what, did James and Lily not know what was going on this whole time? They're just like, oh, you know, our brother's messing up the timeline. Whatever. They weren't even there. You know, we didn't even get to see Rose and Hugo that much. We didn't even get to see Neville. Neville was a critical part of this whole time travel thing and the timelines thing. And we didn't even get to see him. He was talked about a lot. We never got to see him. And Teddy, what I wouldn't give to see how Teddy is nowadays. Like, I, we know, we've never really met Teddy. We've only seen him as a baby at the end when he was kissing Victoire. You know, I really wanted to see more of our favorite characters. And I get that. The reason probably is because it's such a short, like, you know, play. But, I mean, I really wanted to see more of my favorites. I really did. The one thing that <laughs> probably upset me the most, yeah, it, it definitely did, is the fact that Voldemort and Bellatrix had a kid. 
What? Never, and I mean never, did I think for one second that Voldemort even had the remote interest in sex. And I'm sorry if you're young, I'm saying that, but I'm just laying it all out there. I, Voldemort to me was a person, not even a person, he was, you know, he was one seventh of a freaking soul. He was someone that was void of all emotions. He only had anger and the lust for power, and that was all he cared about. So did I ever think that he would be like, he would ever have the remote interest in having sexual relations with anybody. I never thought. I thought he would have no time for that. He wouldn't care. He just wants power, power, power. And even the fact that even if he did want that, I think he would be scared to have a child because the sheer fact that he is just, he wants to be alone in his power. The fact that he would have to have an heir and share his name and his power with somebody would make him probably upset. As most people will be like, oh, I'm going to pass down my name. I think he would be pissed about it because he'd be like, oh crap. I have someone else shares my power. They could overcome me one day because they're my child and they have my powers so that whole fact really I didn't it did not bode well with me because I just thought that was just no 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 I just really did not enjoy that like I never thought Voldemort would even think about that not for one second not even for a decimal of a and second Delphi the daughter what a horrible character I think you know as soon as you met Delphi you're like something's not right this girl's kind of crazy and insane and horrible and I, there's nothing much to say other than like she's just this horrible. Another thing I didn't like was the fact of the way Ron was portrayed. Every time Ron was in this play, he was either eating or he was just being a comic relief, which I get. Ron does like food and he is hilarious. Those are two amazing things about him. But that's not all there is to Ron. He is a very in-depth character, a very complex character, and he's amazing. So the fact that they kind of almost dumbed him down to just eating food and just being a comic relief made me kind of it didn't, it didn't make me really happy. I really wanted to see a very good side of Ron. And the fact that Hermione kind of bossed him around, which I get Hermione bosses him around, but I love, I, I usually love their dialogue because they're very, you know, one and forth. Ron didn't even kind of like try to, I don't know, argue back, I guess. I just really didn't like the way Ron was portrayed. And I might be the only one that feels that way, but that's just how I feel. Those are my what I liked and what I didn't like. I know I probably went a little bit too far on what I didn't like, but when I think about this book, I think I'll, you know, just have good feelings about it because it is going back into my favorite world and seeing my favorite characters. But overall, I didn't, I'm just still just a mix of emotions, kind of just, you know, on the fence about it. There's, like I said, there's a lot of things I liked. There's a lot of things I didn't like. And I think a lot of people will probably have the same feelings, or at least I hope. I'm not I hope I'm not like the one in a thousand that feels this way. J.K. Rowling said she was kind of done with Harry Potter. I don't think that means she's done with them and she's going to focus on the children now. But either way, I think, you know, it's safe that I say that, that, like, let this be the end. You know, let us just be happy with it. You know, let it just, you know, let, I just want to have amazing memories out of it. Another thing a lot of people complain about, this was kind of written like fan fiction. And as a person that reads a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction, which I do, I mean, I don't I do, okay. It does kind of read like that. I don't feel like it's 100% canon, but uh, that's still iffy. Overall, you know, like I said, I'm still just, I have no rating for this book. I don't know if I'm ever going to rate it, just but I don't know still how I feel about it. If you've read this, please let me know what you thought about it. Do you share some of my feelings? Do you not? You know, let's have a nice, nice, friendly discussion about it in the comments because I would love hearing what you guys think because it's just... It's fun hearing other people's perspectives. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to check out all my other Harry Potter videos. I have done a lot of them on my channel. I'll leave a card up here and all my videos down below. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys later. Bye.